My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Producing Video Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at how to make a lower third graphic. These are the types of graphics that usually come up at the bottom of the screen that identify the speaker who's actually talking on the video at this time. This is a useful way if you have guests to help remind your audience who they're actually listening to, and it's a very important staple of most broadcast production. Now, putting these together is very simple, and one of the easiest ways to do it is to use a program like Adobe Photoshop. What I'm going to show you today is how to create your own lower third bar from scratch. So here's how. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is launch Photoshop, then choose File New. From the new document, you're offered several presets, including the video category. What you'll want to pick is the size that matches your editing format. So if you were working in NTC digital video, you could do that. In the case of this show, we're working in high def, so I'm going to choose 720p. And it loads it in 1280 by 720 at 72 pixels per inch. Now that PPI setting doesn't really matter. That's sort of legacy, the whole 72 DPI PPI thing. Don't worry about that. You can always look up more of that at photoshopforvideo.com, but for this, just leave the preset alone and click OK. When you do that, a new document is made, and this will house our lower third. These lines that you see here are normally used for broadcast television, and you could choose to go a little bit outside of those for purposes of the podcast. The first thing that we need is to create the actual bar. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just select a new layer by clicking the new layer here. And with the marquee tool, I'm going to click and drag to make a new bar. And that gives me the shape of the bar. I'll just go a little bit off the bottom of the screen and we'll simply fill that with black. Edit fill or option delete will fill with your foreground color. And there's our bar and that's fine for now. Now what I want to do next is apply a texture to that. So I'm going to use just a stock photo. Now you could find lots of different sources. A great website out there is called textureking.com where you could download free high resolution textures that might be useful here. This particular photo happens to come from iStock Photo, which is another website where you have lots of affordable images for about three to five dollars for the resolution you'll need for a podcast. I'm going to go ahead and select this and we'll simply come over here and paste it in. And what I want to do is limit that so it applies only to the particular area here of the bar. Let's do Command-T for free transform and rotate that a bit. That's looking pretty good. And in order for that to apply only to the black bar here, we'll simply say Layer, Create Clipping Mask. It indents it and only applies it to the opaque areas of the bar. That's working pretty well. And what I want to do now is go ahead and group those together. So with both layers selected, I'll just press Command or Control G to group those together into a group. Now. The nice thing here is you want to put a little bit of ramped into your transparency. So we'll simply do this by clicking the add layer mask icon here, which attaches a mask and I can grab the gradient tool and we'll do a nice default black to white gradient. And as we click and drag here, you'll see that it puts a nice little ramping into the bar. If I want to go the other way, just click from this other end and drag and you see we get a nice ramped effect on the bar, creating some transparency. We'll go like this here, and that works pretty well. If you want to tweak that, just select it and press Command L, and you can actually play with that transparency ramp as you need to, and create it looking a little bit different. See, we can actually modify that and get what we need for the perfect transparency. Once that's set, you need some text and a logo. So let's go ahead here and we're going to colorize this to actually match our show here. Click on the layer here and we're going to add a solid color. We'll pick a color in our show like a red here. And let's just drag that into the group down here. There we go. It puts it in. We'll put that up on top and we'll do the same thing. Layer, create clipping mask and indents it. And we'll change that to color mode at the bottom of the list there and it colorizes the water, so that's working pretty well. Notice how we get a nice red effect. Let's go ahead and grab our show logo. This is our Vid Podcaster logo that we use on our show here, and we'll paste that in. Put that on the top of the bar. There we go. 
Free transform, command or control T will let you move that around and scale it. That works well. There we go, position that in the corner. If you wanna add a little drop shadow, just simply click on the FX down here and you could do things like drop shadows and bevels. Put a little shadow on that. That works well. And now let's add the text. We'll select our text tool. And the trick here is to click and drag with the text tool so you define the area that you want. So I'll go ahead here and click and drag. And I'm gonna enter the name of the speaker. In this case, I'll just do my own. Now, you're gonna to wanna to do things like adjust the color up here. Let's go with a black for right now. We can also play with the size and other properties as needed. If you wanna change fonts, just click and step through and that works really well. You can also just use the up and down arrows to step through all the fonts you have. Generally here, you're gonna to wanna to use a thicker font so it stands out a little bit and is easier to read. And we'll just step through some of our different options. I'm gonna jump down to one that I particularly like. There we go. And let's move that into place. If we wanna make that easier to read, we might change the color to white. So we'll just click on the text, come up here and change the color, and you see it updates. We can also do things like toss on drop shadows or bevels or glows to help that stand out. A Little bit of a drop shadow there works pretty well. And I'm gonna combine that with a very gentle stroke. Let's change that to black. And that works pretty well. If we need to add a title, that's simple enough. Let's grab the text tool again and we'll make a new text layer. There we go. And we'll type in the title. There we go. Click commit and we can move that around as needed. We'll just drag that down to the bottom here. Let's change the font of that so it's not exactly the same. Instead of using the black weight here, we'll go with a slightly lighter version and we'll just go with bold. There we go. And we'll make that a little smaller. And that works well. Now these lines are here for video purposes, so you don't have to worry about those as much if you're not going out to a television, but still keep everything inside this first set of boxes so it's easier to read. If you wanna reuse that stroke and drop shadow, just right click on it. You could say copy layer style and then paste layer style at the very bottom of the list, and that works out well. Make any changes you need, and then it's time to save the file. So here's what you do. Turn off anything like the background there so you just have this over the transparency grid. This is because it's meant to be keyed when you put it over your live talking head. Then to make things easy, go up to your actions palette and click the little sub menu here to load your video actions. Now within the video actions, you have one here that says alpha channel from visible layers. Select that and press play. It gives you a little bit of instructions. You click continue and it goes ahead, flattens that, and creates this little graphic here for you. It's got everything you need. At this point, simply say file, save as, name your graphic, save it as a TIFF file with layers and the alpha channel included, click save. Do not choose any of these transparency options because the alpha channel will do that for you. What you have here for default is fine, click okay. And now you've got a file that's all set for your video editing timeline. And as you see here, when it's dropped over the video source, it can come up right across the bottom of the screen with the embedded transparency and all of the text there that you need. So there's lots to making graphics for use in video as well as video podcast. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip on making a lower third. If you wanna learn more about making graphics for your video podcast, I have a whole separate show all about making graphics for video. You can find it at Photoshop for Video, as well as its website, photoshopforvideo.com. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Producing Video Podcast. Be sure to work on giving your show a graphic identity to help it stand out from the clutter. And of course, check out our resource site at vidpodcaster.com.
www.thinkdigital.com.